So I'm going to read two short excerpts, both out of context. Uh, Jack is a young actor and wannabe playwright from Boston who was madly in love with this girl named Corinna. He's been in love with her for years. Mm -hmm. And she marries one of his best friends, a lawnmower salesman named Paul. And they move to a seaside town in Connecticut, and they're very happy, which makes Jack very unhappy. And Jack and Corinna used to have kind of a thing, and the last time they had that thing was the threesome where she met Paul. And, uh, so Jack is... Yeah! Lawnmowers! So, so Jack is... Uh, visiting them in that seaside town. And uh, he got sleepy, so she told him to go take a nap in her bedroom. The straw bed. Corinna said the double bed where she sent me to nap used to belong to her dad and his first wife, the one who killed herself before he met her mother. They both a frame in the mattress somewhere in Central Europe in the late 50s, just after the Bulgarian ceremony traveling as part of a cultural exchange program. The thing about the frame, she said, is that it was designed to hold a huge mattress filled with tempered straw. Her dad told her a story about how it reminded them of when they slept in a hayloft once. But the original mattress was long gone and had been replaced by a queen-size American mattress, too narrow and too short for the frame. I was daydreaming, half asleep, when she came into the room, quietly stripped down to her underwear crawled under the covers. Hey, weren't you sleeping? I couldn't tell if I was tired or pretending to be tired as I turned my head on the pillow. There were a few car sounds from the street. Surprisingly, considering how close it was to Corinna's house, I was never able to smell or hear the ocean. I'm tired too, she said, putting her arm around my chest, wrapping her bare leg around my blue jeans underneath the sheets. Since she married Paul, this was the closest we'd been alone. I felt split between how comfortable I was, how comfortable I wanted to be, and the movement of her bare leg. And while we're being ridiculous, lying here like aspiring saints, what the fuck is marriage anyway, but an ornamental restraining order? <laughs> who was I who lived for her more than my father lived for America with his flag embroidered throw pillows more than Charles Jode would live for poetry with his long beige books who was I to be patient I couldn't be still but I didn't move much we shifted against one another for the next half hour I wound my fingers in the base of her hair she brushed her face against my chest I moved my thigh tight between her legs. You asleep? No, you? With her head on my chest, there was no graceful way to kiss her. I was still unsure. Jack? Yeah. Tell me a story. <laughs> Tell me about maybe. We both had the same children's book. It was one of the things we talked about when we first got to know each other. There once was a maybe from Maywitch, I recited, who lived with a bird in his hair. What about the Maywitches, the women? You're getting ahead of me. Sorry. <laughs> and none of the maidens of Maywitch knew why or knew how or could care. I unhooked her bra from the back and touched her breast. I felt her breath warm through my shirt. As I kept repeating the children's book slowly, not sure what I was saying, I felt her cool fingers inside my shirt, moving up my belly and onto my chest. She fell back from me, left her face on my neck. Her breath came unevenly. Her hand warmed under my shirt. If you listen at night, you can hear them, moving far from the lights of the town. I spoke into her hair, her hair muffled it. With my free hand, I tilted her chin up and kissed her. Only after a minute did she open her mouth, and then only a little. I kissed her and ran my hand along the side of her body where I felt her hesitate. Come here. I can't. What? Paul. Fuck him, I said. <laughs> Pulled her away. I had no idea what was behind her eyes as she looked down on me. I realized that I hadn't taken the spurs off my boots yet. I was lying in bed with spurs. <laughs> Jack wears a lot of weird shit. 
Jack, I can't. Fuck this. I rolled off the bed, found my cowboy hat, and put it on. It was ridiculous, but I wanted to cover myself, indignant. What is this? What? You coming into bed, taking your clothes off? You're my best friend. You're... What? This is how you act with Star? Fucking Star is your best friend. And you're... Are you kissing her? Marrying her friend? What's her name? She lay on the back and looked at me. Looked at the ceiling, not moving. Why don't you come and sleep, she said. I took my shirt and spurs off and lay down next to her. She stayed on her side of the bed. This is obvious crap, I said. She was quiet, breathing steadily. You guys signed a fucking piece of paper and all of a sudden, I kissed Paul today. There was no scandal. I don't know why you don't do what you want to do, unless you don't want to. Maybe you don't, but I want you to. I think maybe you would, a quiet settled on us. And after 10 or 15 minutes, she started snoring a little. Her small nose pinched at the bridge, made her snoring a usual sound. I thought of scattered nights in my apartment, waking up with the sun coming in. I s oh good, now I can stop censoring. <laughs> I was feeling really constrained. <laughs> right. um, I'm gonna skip ahead to uh, 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 just another. S no, yeah, no. It was poorly paced. <laughs> um, yeah, totally, totally unsexy part. Well, it's available for pre-order on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> you, you like that? You're gonna enjoy pages 79 to 87. There's a fire over here now. <laughs> There's more flyers here. Totally.